Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time to make a video that I made in the past. That's right, it's a rerun. Well, why would I possibly do that, you might ask? Well, you'll have to ask Wizards why they're re-releasing a limited set. It's time to look at the expected value of a box of Eternal Masters. This time is a little bit different, though, because my distributor told me that I might actually be able to get a box, even though I'm not a WPN location, so that was, you know, strange on Wizards' part, but uh, pretty nice. So this time, I actually give a crap. Now I know closer to release date some of the prices are going to go up or down, uh, generally down, but as it sits right now today, one Mythic is worth on average $26.19, so that's not bad at all. The average Rare is $4.07, which is bad at all. I mean, it sounds high compared to a $3.99 MSRP booster from Standard, but when it comes to $10 per booster or MSRP, uh, that's not quite as good. Now, since some of the uncommons are actually worth quite a bit of money, I threw them in as well. So there's like a $4, a $3, $2.50, $2.50, $2.30, $2, $2, you know, on down to about a dollar. So any uncommon worth $1 or more, I threw it into the average. So that means that the average uncommon is worth 43 cents, and you get three of them per booster. So that's going to throw the price pretty high. So we got the rare and mythic slot, we've got the uncommon slot, you know, times three of course. The last thing is foils. Now there is a 100% chance of getting a foil in the pack, which is really, really nice. That throws the price just through the roof. I didn't feel like filling out every last single price, and they tend to vary a lot, so I just did 1.4 times. So the average foil is worth 1.4 times more than the non-foil version. I also only considered rare and mythic foils. I did not put in common foils, uh, just because I don't think that the 1.4 multiplier would work at that low of a number. So if anything, this is conservative, but I will say that I'm using Card Kingdom's prices, which, you know, they're not the absolute lowest. They're not like TCG Player or eBay, but they're, you know, pretty accurate. They're usually pretty fair. So let's start with the rare slot itself. That would be $6.81 on average, and of course that's being lifted up like crazy due to the Mythics, which of course, since they're printed at half the prevalence, are counted as half the prevalence in the average. Still, they tend to throw it up quite a bit, you know, because of the $90 card, and the $70 card, and the $60 card. Now, after adding in the commons, which is, of course, 43 cents times three, you get $8.10 per booster. Now we're getting closer. Now, this time I decided to uh, calculate this a little differently so that it's more obvious to people, because apparently people totally didn't understand my math. But um, basically, for every 15 mythics that physically exist on the printing sheets... There are 106 rares and 236 commons and uncommons. That's because mythics are printed at half the amount as rares. Here's the problem though. I don't know how commons and uncommons are placed into the foil slot. Are they at their exact unique number? Are they printed at their equivalent booster numbers? Or are they completely flat even odds? I'm just going to have to assume it's unique and that seems more in line with what I've opened but it's not like I've counted. So assuming that that's the case, then you have a about a 4% chance of pulling a foil mythic and a 30% chance of pulling a foil rare. That of course leaves approximately a 66% chance of pulling a common or uncommon as a foil. So proceeding with those numbers, um, you take the average mythic price, which is 2619, multiply it by 1.4 just to represent being a foil, and you get an average of 3666, and then multiply it by the, you know, the probability of about 4%, and you get a $1.54. So I guess you could say that that $1.54 represents the mythic contribution to the foil slot when adjusted for your probability of pulling one. Next up, we got the rares, which are, of course, like I said, $4.07 on average. So you take those, multiply it by 1.4, you get 5.7, or, well, $5.70. Multiply that by 30% and you get $1.69. So if that's all we're considering, just ignoring foil commons and uncommons, because honestly they're kind of hard to move, you get a cumulative $3.23 per rare slot, so per booster. So if you take the uh, rare slot average, which was already weighted uh, for Mythic by price, uh, you got $6.81, add in the commons, you're at $8.10. So then you add in the foil of $3.23, and you've got a per booster value of eleven thirty three. dollars That means that the whole box, which is of course, you know, 24 boosters, would be expected to be worth approximately $271.91. 
Well, the actual MSRP of one box is uh, nine dollars and ninety nine cents times twenty four, which is two hundred and thirty nine seventy six. So that's actually looking pretty good. That's around $32 profit per box, but of course you're never going to just be able to snap your fingers and magically turn a card into its exact cash value. Once it goes to, you know, eBay, TCG Player, whatever, you hit some fees, maybe you're selling on Card Shark. I mean, wherever you get rid of them, especially a buy list, because that'll lose you over 50%. But, you know, just shipping fees, envelopes, you know, whatever, top loaders, sleeves, you're probably looking at a loss. If I remember correctly, I think the day before the release of Eternal Masters, I think the box EV was somewhere between like 300 and 350, depending upon how you looked at it. Maybe it was even 400 for a little bit. So uh, that was a little higher. But hey, these cards were just printed. So everything's peachy, right? That That's a lovely price. Um, Slight problem. I really don't see how this is possible other than, well, stupid investors trying to, you know, emergency liquidate their inventory. But if you go on eBay right now, you can get a sealed box of Eternal Masters for about $215. So theoretically, you could open it and make, what, like 50 bucks or something profit? That's not bad. I mean, that doesn't even make sense, honestly. I don't think these things were below MSRP on eBay. They were floating right about it. I mean, it's not like I tracked it every single day, but last time that it was released, it was such a short set, they tended to sell for right around like 240 or 250 so that's kind of weird, but I think it's a side effect of people just absolutely dumping them. I mean, just saying, oh my god, they're printing it again, put them all out there. And the volume of listings and the total volume of available boxes for like 215 to 220, very, very, very low. I mean, it's going to hit like 240 a lot quicker. So should you pick it up? I mean, yeah, I guess if all you care about is return and you're not actually selling the cards... But um, I would say draft with it. I mean, I, I agree with Wizards on this. If it's that close to the MSRP, but it is above it, then draft with it. You get the value out of it, and you might win prizes, maybe, if that's what your local gaming store does. So that's been your official update on Eternal Masters pricing, and hopefully you guys can get your hands on some boosters if that's what you want to do, and I'll see you guys next video.